Good morning, everyone. Thank you for uh, hopping in. Good morning, Betty. Thank you for hopping in just a little bit later this morning. I was not creative last night and I wanted to have three projects for you. And so I decided um, I needed to go to bed and just get up early. Well, then when my alarm went off, I had a hard time getting out of bed this morning. So good morning. Yes, it is a chilly morning, Kay. Oh my goodness. Um, I was outside. And then the other thing that caused me to be a little bit later is when I brought Lila out, the neighbor dog came over and I was trying to get her back over to her yard um, and um, her owner didn't know that she was gone. And so I'm trying to get her over there. So it was kind of a crazy morning here this morning. So good morning, Marsha and Karen. Thank you for joining me this morning. Um, this is week two of the 12 weeks of Christmas and my Christmas project this week is going to be a 3D project. I'm gonna do it last. I'm gonna do the two cards first and then I will do that last. Good morning, Patricia from Arizona. I'm sure it's not chilly there compared to here. Um, good morning, Lisa and Marsha. Um, thank you, Lisa, for sharing. I'm gonna start, since Lisa's on here, I'm gonna start with my happy mail for this week. So. Um, I received this card in the mail from Lisa Neeland. Isn't that beautiful? I love that soft seedling um, stamp set. So simple, but so elegant. It has that leaf embossing folder. I don't know if you can see that in the back. It's just gorgeous, Lisa. And she was thanking me for these little gems that she received in a um, drawing for sharing a couple weeks ago. So. Um, thank you, Lisa, for the happy mail. Um, thank you for those of you that um, emailed me suggestions of what to try so that I have a clearer picture. I did do a little bit of a test. Looks like we've got Linda and Mary joining us on YouTube as well. Karen Kars just hopped on on Facebook as well. So um, I tried a couple of things. I went live last night for a little bit of time. Um, and it seemed like on Facebook it was clear. YouTube's never have a problem. It's always clear. It's just Facebook. So I um, saved a couple, changed a couple of settings that people recommended. It seemed to be pretty good last night. So we will hold out hope. Good morning, Becky. You're watching me on your bike. That's awesome. I will keep you company while you are um, doing your workout this morning. By the way, you are looking awesome, girl. Keep it up. Um, I wanted to just do a quick reminder before we do prizes of the best deal that Stampin' Up! has going right now, which is the starter kit. So you do not have to do what I do with doing uh, Facebook Lives and things. If you would like to get a discount on everything that you purchase, right now for $99, you can get $100 $55 in free product and free shipping on that. So if you are looking to purchase the cardstock, stamp set, anything like that to make your Christmas cards, you could get more for your money. Um, the um, To stay an active demonstrator, you would that you would be joining my team and you to stay active, you have to make $300 in purchases every quarter. So every three months you have to make, so it averages to out to about $100 a month and you get, um, you get to get the catalog early and you get to order early from stuff like that. So I just wanted to bring it to your attention. If you're looking at spending about $99, it is the best deal because normally you get $125 for that $99 now you get 155, so $30 more. Good morning, Diane. Good morning, Amanda. Um, good morning, Nancy. Thank you all for joining me. Um, I have some prizes to give away and then we will get to stamping because we have two cards and a 3D project. And sometimes those 3D projects take just a little bit longer to make. So last week we made this Christmas card. I made 19 of these for a swap. It opens up like this, so it opens up like flips up and then this side opens um, and it had the candy canes on it. We also did the bay window. Oh, I got the envelope there. The bay window. Okay, so it sets up like this. So it looks like one of those bay windows. Um, and receiving these for making a comment. So I put all your names into a drawing 
And this week, when I did my random number pick, um, it was Tammy Litsky. So Tammy, I will be getting these off in the mail to you, and I'm pretty confident that I have your address. And then for sharing, a bunch of you have already commented that you shared. Um, you will be getting um, a roll of this ribbon. I lost my train of thought there for a second. Sorry about that. So if you share with on your Facebook page or if you share um, to anyone in a private message, you get into a drawing. And so receiving this is some of that ruffled uh, real red ribbon, which I thought would be really nice for the holidays, either to put on cards or to put on packages is Denise Unlocked. So Denise, I will be sending this off in the mail to you as well. Um, oh, thanks, Linda. Linda got the cards last, the week before, and I did get all that stuff in the mail last week, finally. Um, Julie Schlieve, I didn't, if you are on here, I did not get your prize in the mail because your order just came in. So I'm gonna try to run that out to you today. So I'll just drop it off at your house with your order. So I think it's time for us to get stamping. So I'm gonna put the dimensions for our first card up here. Um, I kind of have a beginner stamper, a medium type stamper, and a more advanced stamp uh, selection for you today. So this first card, I have to go to a baby shower next week, Saturday, and I had to make a card. And they know it's gonna be a boy, so I purposely did boy uh, masculine colors, <laughs> but, um, I wanted to, I thought I would use this as my more basic card for today. So I'll go ahead and bring you back in. So the color combination that I used for my boy card <laughs> is Night of Navy. And this is um, five and a half by eight and a half. And I scored it at four and a quarter. So it's just a standard card, no fun fold or anything in this. Um, I have some smoky slate that measures three and three quarters by five. And then I have some balmy blue to go with that. And this balmy blue, I ran through, I have it here. These are our stitched with whimsy. They do not cut. They just leave this stitching around the outside. And I thought that just added a little something. So we're gonna put the word baby up here. We're gonna put our little elephant down here. So we're gonna have a couple of different things stitched. And I think the quality of the video does look maybe a little bit better today. Oh, maybe not. It's still kind of blurry when the stuff's down here. So, um, but I hope hopefully you're okay watching. Um, so this measures, sorry, this is balmy blue and it's um, three and three quarters by five. And then I have a piece of basic white that's going to go on the inside. And this is four by five and a quarter. Okay, and I put one of those little square whimsies. We're gonna put a little elephant on the inside of our card as well. And we're gonna bring some of that fun stitching to the inside of the card as well. All right, I did, for the sake of um, time, I did stamp my little elephant and a couple of the butterflies that are in there. Um, and I did stamp these ahead of time and we just have to color them. I have two of the butterflies and I have the elephant so that that is stamped and cut out already. And then in the dies with that elephant parade is this little sprig of grass that we're gonna use. All right, I have a scrap because again, we're gonna type the, or we're gonna stamp the word baby and what we're gonna be doing with that is we're gonna be using this alphabet set. Oops, I've got a little bit of a glare there. So this alphabet has these cool little shapes that you can stamp or little patterns that you can stamp in that shape. And then the letters fit inside. And then there's a punch to punch that out. So I haven't used this yet. And so when I was looking through all of my baby stuff, I really didn't have a whole lot. <laughs> I'm not at an age where I go to a lot of baby showers and stuff. This happens to be a coworker. And when she was one of my students, I was her confirmation sponsor. Now she's come back and worked at the school as well. She kind of took over my old job. <laughs> and um, so her mom invited me to her baby shower. So I'm going to that next Saturday. So anyhow, it's just kind of cool to watch um, students that you had grow up. It's kind of the fun of teaching. So I'm gonna bring the stamps in here. 
I don't need all of this because I did stamp my one little elephant already and I cut him out. But I am going to use some Memento ink. I'm just going to make sure that everything's looking okay on here yet. Kind of looks good today. Better, maybe. <laughs> I'm going to stamp the little elephant that is sitting so cute in this little square for on the inside. Oh, isn't he cute? All right, I've got this little one for the outside. And I think I'm going to use some Night of Navy ink to bring my color to the inside. And on the inside, I'm going to say sweet little one, which is um, a greeting that was, I'm going to stand up for that. There we go. Um, I thought that that was cute to bring on the inside. While I have my ink out here, I'm going to bring my scrap in. And I decided to use this little polka dotted background. So I'm going to bring in the balmy blue ink. Um, I'm done with the memento. I can cover that up so I don't drop anything in it. <laughs> that would be my luck. Now my punch, when I did these the first time, I, I stamped them all upright, but my punch is sideways so that I don't have to keep cutting my paper in order to have it fit inside my punch. I'm going to stamp them this time sideways. You should always look at your punch first. Lesson learned. <laughs> All right. Good morning, Julie. <laughs> I see that Kay is also joining us on YouTube. I think the picture for some reason. And somebody, um, one of the comments that, or one of the articles that somebody sent me, I'm doing four of these for the word baby. An article that one person sent me about my whole um, blurry video had said that YouTube is meant to be a video platform and Facebook is not really meant to be a video platform. They've added it, but that you get a much better quality all the time from YouTube than you do from Facebook because that's what YouTube was designed to be is a video platform. So I guess that makes sense. Um, but I know everybody is more attached to any two Bs, right, baby? Um, everybody else is more attached to Facebook these days probably than YouTube. So like to meet you where you are. <laughs> Let me go ahead and stamp all of these in there. Isn't that fun? I'll bring them up so that you can see it a little bit better. So it's not spelt right right now, but I'll put it in the right order after I punch them out. Okay, we'll close up all of our ink because we are done with all of our ink. I don't want to get mess, put anything inside of there. So this little punch, I'll line it up. And after it's lined up, we'll just go ahead and punch that out. So there's our Y. This is the card that I came up with yet this morning. It's like, oh, I've got to do that for anyway. So I might as well kill two birds with one stone, right? Get my baby card done and also get a card for all of you. All right, I'm going to bring in my blends. We're going to color this up. I'm going to move this up a little bit so I stay in the frame. Make sure we didn't I miss any comments. All right, I have, this is um, Smoky Slate. It's the light in the dark. And what I did was I just took some of the lines that are already in the image and I kind of just in this tail and the little feet, toenails or whatever those are. <laughs> and some of these lines, I just kind of went over them with the ears, kind of did the outside in a little bit dark, the darker shade. And then I came back and I'm finding that I really like to color with the fine tip, with the blends, rather than with that thicker tip. When I'm using a Stampin' Rate marker, I tend to use the thick side more because the thin side is really thin. But I feel like I can get, um, 
I color a little bit better. I feel like I have more control over the coloring, if that makes sense, when I use the bullet tip rather than the brush tip on the blends. Now, if I had something really big, like right in this area right here where I'm coloring right now, I could probably use the um, brush tip, but I want to make sure that I get around these eyes and I don't color in his eyes. And I want to make sure that I stay within the lines fairly, especially this one. I'm not going to be cutting this out at all. Um, it's going to be on the inside of my card and it's just going to be sitting there like this. So I want to make sure that um, I stay within the lines. I don't want to look like a, it was a two-year-old that colored it, <laughs> although some two-year-olds can color really well. All right. <laughs> Probably not this well, though. <laughs> okay. Um, so I know that you're just watching me color, but I wanted to show you how easy it is. And I was going to have this all colored because we do have three projects today. The second one is going to be a fun fold. That's going to be our more little bit more advanced than this first card that we're doing here but oh this first card is just so sweet oh you know what i i think i want some butterflies on the inside here i'm gonna bring that back but let's keep coloring and i'll bring the butterflies or bring my ink back in so again i'm gonna go ahead and around the outside of his ear i'm gonna make that a little darker and i'm gonna do a little bit on his bottom here and then we'll color in the rest. I just think this elephant is so cute. I'm so glad that I purchased it. Um, it was kind of a later, it wasn't like the first thing that I felt I needed to get out of the catalog. There were a lot of other things, but it was one of those things where, oh, I could see where this could be um, really cute for a lot of variety in some different cards. So that is why I ended up getting it just a little bit later. Um, I actually, <laughs> I had some money that I had, some product credit that I had earned from my sales. Thank you to all of you. And, um, and I was able to get some stuff for free. And this was one of the things that I ended up picking out for free with the dies that go with it because not only can you cut out like I can fussy cut out these elephants if I wanted to but like the little grass and cutting out the balloons and there's little circus peanuts and there's all kinds of things like that that are also in this okay let's uh let's stamp a couple of butterflies on our inside here yet I do with the memento ink. I didn't put it back where it was supposed to go. <laughs> That's always a problem. I don't know where I said it though. Here it is. Let's just do a little butterfly up in the corner there. That adds a little bit, I think. Now I'm putting it back where it belongs. Uh, with the butterflies, I took Night of Navy. I have the light Night of Navy and I have the light balmy blue. And I'm just going to color in the little dots in the body with the darker color and try to get in those little circles here you really need the bullet point i'll bring it up there to show you because i know i'm pretty far away for you to really see what i'm doing here but that just adds a little bit of blue to the inside of that card all right i should have a couple of more butterflies here that's going to go on the outside of my card and we'll get those colored. I'll keep that cap off while I quickly color. Make sure I'm in the camera. I feel like I'm not as close to myself as I normally am. That makes sense. Like I have to reach to get into the camera today. So I must have moved my camera a little bit when I was trying to do all of my adjustments. You can probably hardly even see those butterflies on there because I'm kind of far away. But I'm afraid to zoom in too much because I feel like that's when I've been getting kind of blurry. So I will bring these up to you after I have them colored in. Oops, and I forgot to color in the body on this one. Here we go. 
So super simple to color those. Just a little butterfly with a little bit of blue coloring to it. All right, now we are ready to assemble our card. So I'm going to go ahead and attach this balmy blue to the smoky slate. So it's just like an eighth of an inch different all the way around. So it's like a sixteenth of an inch. We're going to be using sixteenths of inches today. <laughs> I got it. I got the thing. Okay. Thank you. I'm I'm just catching up on YouTube comments. Thank you for those of you that are commenting. Yeah, I do. I love to teach. I do have a couple of, because I'm in the elementary campus now, Mary uh, Van Domlin, she said, it's fun when you start to get the kids, children of kids that you used to teach. And I do have some of those already, believe it or not. Oh, you know what I wanted to do? Oh, and I forgot to do it before I put that down. I was going to rough up the edges of the outside of the blue one a little bit, but we'll just leave it as it is. Um, and I'm going to use some dimensionals. I have to cut some here. Um, because I'm at the elementary campus is now, although there are some high school kids, believe it or not, I have, um, there is someone that I had one of my first years at Xavier, um, and she went on mission trips with me to the Dominican Republic and things like that. And she is a teacher at our elementary campuses, but now she has a son that's in high school already too. And I'm like, oh my gosh. I don't know where some of the first students that I taught are because that was in Green Bay. With not being in Green Bay, I've kind of lost track. A couple of them have found me on Facebook and have asked me to be friends. That's one of the nice things about Facebook is that you do get to connect with people or you find people that you haven't been in touch with for a long time. I know for me, that's some classmates and former students and things like that. I'm gonna put this on our inside. Then we're gonna build this outside. I'll show you what I did when I said that I roughed up the edges a little bit. I'll show you what I did on the card that I made. Um, the first card that I made, the sample that I made. All right. This grass, I'm gonna have come down here, and I'm actually going to put that up on a dimensional. And I'm gonna cut a really little piece, a couple of little pieces, thin pieces. So I'm just taking my dimensionals, and in the corner where I just cut off the edge there, just taking a really little piece, and I'm gonna run it along the bottom of that grass. So you can kind of see that there. here. So funny. So this um, person that I have to go to the baby shower for, she teaches theology and she was doing something on vocation. So she always has me come in and talk about the vocation of single life. And I always tell the kids, it's not really a vocation that you chose. I mean, it's not like when I was in high school and when I was growing up, I was like, you know, I want to be single. In fact, it took me a lot of years to get to the point where I could accept the fact that this is sort of what I feel like God's plan is for me right now because I haven't met anyone that I want to be with. And so the questions that they had were quite uh, entertaining and quite interesting, but um, it, it's weird because, you know, other people, they choose to get married and they choose, it's not really I chose to be single, it's just that it's where I am right now. All right, so this is just going to go in that little frame that's up there. Isn't that cute just to have the little baby and it looks like the baby's like he's almost, I was kind of picturing that he was kind of blowing that out of his trunk. I don't know. I guess that's the creative or the inside image of our, what I was kind of picturing. I'm just going to put these on some dimensionals. That was what was going on in my brain, I guess. Crazy as that is. <laughs> But anyway, I told them, I said, there are certain things that I've been able to do in my life that I never would have been able to do 
if I had a family, all the traveling that I got to do and mission trips that I got to go on and all of that kind of stuff. So anyway, it's so funny that some of the questions that they ask. All right, we are almost done with this card. We're just going to have to bling it up a little bit because we always have to add a few embellishments, right? And I thought about putting some of these popped up and some of them not popped up. I looked at that for a while, but I'm like, no, I think they look best just kind of being popped up there. So I did end up in the end popping all of them up, but you could for a little bit of dimension, you could put some of them popped up, some of the letters popped up, alternate them with being popped up and, and not being popped up. So it would give it a little bit of dimension there. All right, we have our butterflies, which those I'm gonna need a mini dimensional for where I could cut one of these other ones. But the mini worked just perfect on here. And I'm gonna put, there were just a couple of areas that were sort of blank that I felt needed. So I put one right there. I'm gonna put one up in this corner up here. I do feel like my picture is a little bit clearer today on YouTube. I don't know, those of you that are on YouTube, do you kind of agree that it looks a little bit clearer? I hope so. I really tried to work on it this week. All right, we have some of this crinkle ribbon, which you could color if you wanted to with the stamp and Blend. I thought about doing the navy um, and coloring it in navy, and then I'm like, oh, I think white looks just as good on there. And I didn't even feel like I had to go through that. I should get my bow maker here. I think I have them both in the other room right now. These do make a really nice ribbon, but you kind of, I want it to be small. I don't want it to be really big. So I have to work on it just a little bit to make it that small because I don't know how to make a small ribbon to begin with. So I always, it's bigger, and then I just do this and make it really small, and then I pull on it, and I make it small again, and then I pull on it some more until I get it the size that I want. I think that's pretty good. Go ahead and trim those off. Whoops, I need my ribbon scissors. That other one is not very good because I was... I had it out because I was distressing some of the paper. <laughs> I'm just gonna put that underneath where it says baby and I just want this loop here. And I'm just gonna take a glue dot and attach that. Down there. Oh, so cute. And then I did have some of these beautiful um, iridescent pearls. So they're not just pearls. They actually have a little bit of an iridescent um, shine to them. And I'm just going to randomly put a couple of those in spots where it might just be a little bit. Let's go right up there. So just a couple of those on there just to add a little bit of bling to our card. But I thought, and I did get the Wink of Stella, which you're not going to be able to probably see, but I did go over the butterflies with just a little bit of Wink of Stella to bring another little bit of that glitz. But I really liked how the card turned out. I thought it's super simple, but yet it's a baby shower, so she's probably not going to do, although you could take this and you could add it as part of a scrapbook or something if you wanted to. My sister-in-law, the first couple of years that she had kids, that's what she would do with all of the cards that I made them for their birthdays. I would go all out for their birthday cards when they were little, and um, she would always cut the top part off and she would put it in their scrapbook. So a lot of my cards are in the kids' scrapbooks, so it's just kind of cool that she did that. But she was a scrapbooker, so she understood all the time that went into making the birthday cards. So, oh, good. Thanks, Aunt Mary. Your picture is really clear today. I'm so happy to hear that. So this is the one that I made 
as my sample, and I don't know if you can see this, but all I did on this one is I took this scissors that wasn't a ribbon scissors, and I just, all you do is you take it and you run it along the paper. So here's a piece of cardstock. And if you just go like this and you kind of run it against that paper, it adds sort of like this little frayed look. And I don't know if you can see that frayed look, but I did that on the one that I had made here. So you can see a little bit of that fraying maybe right there. Um, I forgot to do that on this one, but I think it still looks good. <laughs> All right, so card number one is our little baby card, playing with our alphabet along with the Stitched of Whimsy to make just a pretty simple card, but yet so cute. Um, and I did have an envelope here. Let's just, I don't want to have you wait and have me have to color things. I promise you that whoever is getting this, I will stamp something on this envelope and you will get it with a decorated envelope. <laughs> All right, let's go back and I'll go ahead and give you the dimensions for our next card, which is going to be a fun fold. That's a double Dutch door. And we're going to be using our little nuts about squirrels stamp set. So for those of you that like to take pictures of the um, directions, those are the pictures. I will post these afterwards. I do have to take some pictures yet because I was running just a little bit late today. All right, let's come back here. All right, so we have, have everything out, the stamps are out. We're going to be using Granny Apple Green. And so the dimensions for the base of our card, um, this is nine inches by four and three sixteenths, which is just a sixteenth of an inch smaller than four and a quarter. So when you look at a ruler, here's my little t math teacher. So we've got four and a quarter is right here. That little line just before four and a quarter would be four and three sixteenths. Okay, so that is four and three sixteenths. And the reason is because we're going to be wrapping something around the bottom. And if I go all the way to four and a quarter, it gets a little bit tight to get it in the envelope afterwards. So that's why you have to do that four and three sixteenths instead of four and a quarter. It just has to be a little bit smaller. Okay, this measures two by eight and a half. And that these are each scored at two and an eighth. And this is going to wrap around the bottom like this. And this piece is going to set inside of there. And that's going to be our doors that are going to be opening. So that's the double Dutch doors on the bottom. All right. We have some, I'm going to pair this with, because these were the colors in my designer series paper, crushed curry. Um, so this piece measured um, four by three and a quarter. And then this one measured three and seven eighths by three and an eighth. And that's just gonna go over the top. That's gonna be our little image. On our little doors on the bottom, we are gonna have some crushed curry again. These measure two by one and seven eighths. So they're not quite a square. They're a little bit of a rectangle. And then we're gonna be using, isn't this paper fun? Okay, we're going to be using these fall leaves paper um, and this measures um, one and seven eighths by one and three quarters. So again, it's just off by an eighth of an inch. So those are going to go there on the bottom. Oh, I have some of the designer series paper that we can add to our envelope as well. Okay, so let's get our stamping done. I also have a piece of basic white that's going to go on the inside that's four by five and a quarter. Let's set this aside for right now. Let's work on our stamping first. All right. I loved this squirrel set last year and I had to bring it out again. Oh, let me see. My voice keeps fading in and out. Hmm. I think that's probably because it's picking up on my computer. And when I go away from my computer, it's probably not picking my voice up. So I apologize for that. I'll try to keep my volume up a little bit and make my face face as much as I can towards that. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, okay, we are going to take this branch 
I should get a little microphone. I have microphones at school and they're, they do work really well, but I didn't know if I wanted to be attached to a microphone. All right, I'm gonna take this branch and this is my inside of my card. We're just gonna have it come in off the side there. My inside greeting. This is gonna be a birthday card. Hope you're feeling bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Isn't that fun? All right, I have found with using this stamp set that I like doing the little veins of the um, leaves first and then stamping the color of the leaves over the top. I find it easier to line them up to do it that way. So here are the little veins of my leaf that I'm gonna um, stamp in there first. And let's put one up here too. Okay, and we're gonna put some color over the top of that. But I'm gonna do all of the stuff that I need in my um, early espresso before I put that, and then I'm gonna close that up. All right, I need the branch back again. And this one is gonna go down a little bit lower because my squirrel is gonna be standing on that branch. And then I wanted to have something over on this side a little bit. So I just moved that branch the opposite way and put it over there. I'm also going to put my birthday greeting on the front. And that's just going to go right down here. Happy birthday. Good. We have to do some leaves on this. So I'm going to just do, I think I'm going to do two of them on this top branch and we'll do three down here. So one go that way and I'm just kind of playing around with where I think I want the leaves to be. I'll have this one come over there. I don't want it to run into the happy birthday at all. So, I mean, it can go a little bit on there but I don't want it to, um, to overtake the happy birthday. Then on the rest of this branch, I'm gonna put this little squirrel. And there's this is a two-part stamp or two. Um, it has an outline, which we're gonna do in the um, early espresso. Isn't that cute already? Oh, just wait till we add some color to that. I just love this squirrel set. I think it is so cute. All right, I'm gonna bring in some Sahara sand ink. And the second part of our squirrel, the inside part, I'm going to stamp in that Sahara sand. And this, you just have to kind of line up the legs. So I'm lining up his legs and I'm lining up the ears. And there are parts of this that stay white. Okay, so I'll bring this up so that you can see that a little bit closer. So there are parts of it that stay white. Right, so our squirrel is done. Oh gosh, it's looking cute already. Now we've got to bring some color into this. <laughs> so I have this leaf and I'm gonna start with some crushed curry. That's one of the colors in our designer paper, the leaves that are in there. So I'm gonna do a couple of these leaves, okay, in crushed curry. And I'm going to do one of them over here, I think, in crushed curry. Right, we do have a chamois. Whoops, that went uh, Denise's ribbon. <laughs> I set it on top of my chamois. All right, I'm going to keep my chamois out. Next color I'm going to use is some of the Poppy Parade, because that's another color that's in here. And we'll do a poppy parade leaf here. Oh, doesn't that add so much to it once you start adding that color? And we'll add one here. And let's do this one in poppy parade. All right, and then the last color I'm gonna use is the color of my card. So I wanna get some granny apple green in there. <laughs> so we're gonna use some granny apple green.
Oh, so many of you have said that the image is clear on Facebook today. Yeah, it is on mine too, on my iPad. I'm so happy. <laughs> I spent about an hour last night kind of reading through everything. And then I went on live and I tried a little bit of it. And I'm like, I think I got it figured out. It was a setting and I had to do a speed test on my computer, which I've done that before on computers at school. So I knew how to do that. And I realized that because my internet is so good that I can up the um, frames per second. And if I upload, if I up that, your quality is supposed to be better. So I went from 30 to 60, I think. And so, or 40 to 60, I think. So I was hoping that would do the trick. But they said you can't up it. It usually doesn't default to that because most people don't have an internet speed, what my internet speed is. So that's good. I know that I spent quite a bit of money when we went virtual because my job is in technology and I was having to make videos for people all the time to show them how to do things when they were at home. And um, so the first thing I had to do was call and get my internet up. <laughs> so I have the fiber optic internet. All right, so I'm just taking my bone folder and I am creasing these really good. All right, and now we want to attach this, like I said, to the back so that this wraps around just like that. So I'm going to add my liquid glue and I use liquid glue on this. You could use um, like a tear and tape if you wanted to, to make sure that it was really secure. But I find that the liquid glue gives me a little more wiggle room um, to get it in place. And I feel that if you let the liquid glue sit, it's just as powerful as that tear and tape. So I'm going to go ahead and center this and line up the bottom. So I'm just lining up the bottom and if you need to you can set it down like this and make sure that it's square and then just give that a really good pull or press all right looking good there's our double dutch door uh, opening now i'm going to do this inside part Okay, so that's what they're going to get when they get inside. This is going to be layered on top of the crushed curry. And let's see if I can get it straight. Like I said, I feel like I'm a million miles away from myself today. I'm having to reach my arms way out there. Um, because of where my camera is for some reason. Let me put this aside. So that's going to go on the top. He's so cute. All right. And then I'm going to add, this is where the color comes in that I chose for the leaves that are on the top because they should match with the leaves in this paper. There's one of them. And because this isn't square, you got to kind of make sure you're putting it on the right way. I'm having to do like a double take, like, did I do that right? <laughs> because it is just an eighth of an inch off. So. Go ahead. See what I mean? Like I could have put that the other way, but it would have been a little bit off. And I'm just doing this so that I can see exactly where that fold is. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. There we go. And there is pretty much our finished card. We're gonna add just a little bit of bling to it. So how it opens is it flips up like this, and then these little pieces open on the bottom. It's called a double, double Dutch door fold. 
All right, um, I have some of these um, rustic metallic dots that I thought just to put a couple of those here and there. Let's see. On the card, but just add just a little bit as well. Super easy to do but a little bit of a fun fold. Now, when I made my sample the other day, I ended up doing it in, this is in shaded spruce rather than the grainy apple green. So which one do you like better? Do you like the shaded spruce, the darker green? Because there is some of that in there. Or do you like the granny apple green, the brighter green? This one, I still use the granny apple green for the leaf because the shaded spruce was just a little bit too dark. So that is our card number two. And I do have a little bit of DSP that we can put on. I'm just going to do this so that my wood surface doesn't get glue on it by chance. We'll go ahead and add some of that DSP because it is so fall. Like, so someone who has a fall birthday, this would be a cute card because it's fall, but yet it's not like, oh, it's a Halloween card that they sent me for my birthday. Um, it's just got a really nice fall look to it. And again, it's not flowers, but it has the leaves in it. I, I Don't get me wrong. I love flowers, but I find that I gravitate so much to flowers that I feel like sometimes you think all she ever does is flowers. So today we're not getting any flower cards. <laughs> all right. So there is our little double dutch door squirrel card fun all right did anyone say the darker green okay kathy jean likes the darker green uh granny apple green for diane nancy likes the granny apple sandy granny so most of you think that my second choice was better than my first choice my first choice was actually the um uh what do you call it shaded spruce and then I, as I was doing it, I'm like, oh, oh, I lost my camera again. Darn it. We were doing so well. <laughs> Let me get my camera back here, ladies. Sorry about that. And it doesn't want me to do my Christmas one, I guess. There we go. I think I'm back. All right. I think I'm back. Now, am I gonna be blurry again? No, I think I'm, once I get in there, I think I'm okay. All right, so I think I'm back and I think I'm good. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I don't know what happened. It said it was a network connection error. So it's not that my phone went to sleep because that was one thing that I checked was, was it going to sleep? And it wasn't going to sleep. I've changed some of the lighting so I have less light coming on. There's so many different things that I changed. So I don't know what one thing did it, but um, it's working. So our next one is going to be our 3D project. So let me get the dimensions up here for you. I'm gonna tell you that I found this last year um, and I was planning to do it last Christmas and I never got around to it. <laughs> So I happen to have the product that you need for it still here from something that I purchased last Christmas. And um, I decided I'm gonna do it today. I'm gonna go on the record as saying I did not make this up myself. I found this from Julie DiMatteo. Her um, website is The Paper Pixie. And um, I get a lot of my 3D boxes and things like that from her because she is just phenomenal. And so um, this she did two years ago. I found it last year um, and I was going to do it, but I'm using Bath and Body Works. This is called um, Body Butter. <laughs> and so this is what we're actually gonna be making a box to be able to gift this. So I did go to Bath and Body Works just to make sure that they still made this and they do. Um, and right now, they have a sale like for their, um, not that I'm doing a plug for Bath and Body Works, but they do have a sale that if you purchase any of their um, like 
gel, um, shower gels, um, moisturizing cream. This is part of it. You buy three and you get your fourth one free. If you like the three wick candles, those are also $10 off. <laughs> I just went on their website to look this morning so I could let you know. Actually, I looked the other night to make sure they still made it. And then I wanted to like, I should probably give some sort of a price. So we are gonna make a box for that to go in. So I am going to make my box and I probably should have done Poppy Parade because this one has, <laughs> it's even called Poppy. Um, but we are gonna make a box for this to go in. So I'm going to bring my Simply Score tool in here so that I can show you the scoring of this and we're gonna go ahead and cut the pieces as well this morning. So the base of the box, so the big box itself is seven and seven eighths by seven and seven eighths. So you can kind of see it goes right to that line. We are gonna score at two and one eighth on all four sides. So two and one eighth on my Simply Score tool doesn't have 16s. So it's that little tick, that little mark right after the two. You can do this if you want um, on your paper trimmer. I find that with my paper trimmer because I could be off just a little like where you move the paper. This one, I just have to go right into the side of it. And I find that I'm a little bit probably more precise. Okay, now this measures seven and 11 sixteenths by seven and 11 sixteenths. What that is, is just one little mark less. So this is halfway between the seven and three quarters and the seven and five eighths. So it's that little mark right before you get to seven and three quarters. I'm gonna score this at one and two on all of the sides. So pretty easy scoring directions. Probably the cutting of it to get it in the right size is the hardest part. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna get my Simply Score tool out of here. And what we're gonna do next is take a bone folder and we're gonna make sure that we burnish all of these folds really well. Whenever you're making a 3D project, a box, in this case, um, sometimes, some of your, uh, even some of your fun folds because of the types of folds that they have. You just wanna make sure that you do burnish these really well. It helps putting it together uh, a lot. So I'm gonna go ahead, got eight of them on this side and then my covers over here. Now, what we have to do is we have to cut this to make it ready so that we can, because right now it's not in a box. You can kind of see the way it's supposed to go into a box. This is going to be the base and this, these are going to be the sides, but we have to figure out how to put it together. So what you're going to want to do is take a scissors and I'm going to do these all on the right hand side. And this is how she did it. So I'm just copying what she did. So what you're going to do is you're going to cut up to that first line. Now, this is making a little tab. To make it so that that tab folds a little bit nicer, I'm gonna just come in and I'm gonna take just a little bit off. She calls it a miter cut, which I get it. That's what, I think that's what you call it. Uh, like the miter saw does that when you're doing uh, woodworking. So I'm just basically gonna cut a little bit of that off. And I didn't do a very good job here. Trying to keep it in the camera and do it as far away as it is from myself is getting up to be a little difficult. Okay, so I did it on the right hand side. I'm gonna turn it counterclockwise. I'm going to cut up again on the right hand side, just up to that first score line. And I'm gonna cut out just a little notch there and just a little notch here. Okay, now again, I'm going to turn it counterclockwise and I'm gonna do the same thing. Cut up, 
Here's my little tab. So I need to cut a little bit in that corner and a little bit in that corner. Okay, now I'm gonna turn it counterclockwise again. I'm going to cut up on the right side. Here's my little tab that I made. And I will have all of these directions on how to put it together. I'll even try to like take a picture of this so that you have a template of what it will look like when you're done. So it kind of looks like a pinwheel. See how the tabs are just kind of there. Now what we want to do with this one, I didn't get all the way in here. Let me get this. It does help to kind of fold that in a little bit. There we go. All right, if we wanted to, we could go ahead and put the box together. Why don't we do that? And then we'll work on our cover. So all of these tabs are just going to go around like that to put our box together. Pretty simple, right? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do one of these at a time. And I'm going to go ahead and put glue on my tab. And then this cut right here has to match up, square up with that fold. Okay, so I'm just going to square that up and then give it a good press. Now you can, if you like tear and tape, you could use tear and tape. I tend to like the liquid glue. <laughs> I do have to hold it there a little bit for it to set in place. But like I said, there's that little bit of wiggle room. Okay, so this line right here, that fold right there, I'm going to be lining up. And the next one, I'm gonna put a little more than that on there. I don't use much glue on things, but on something like this, I do a little bit more. I don't want it oozing out though, because glue spreads. <laughs> when you got tape, tape stays in its place, glue oozes. So you have to just be careful not to put too much so that you have glue oozing out um, on the sides. Less is best, is what I always tell the kids in school. <laughs> all right, and uh, get some glue on here. I should have put all the glue on first. There we go. Press that. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my body butter, I'm gonna stick it right inside of there. So it's a perfect fit for it. Love that, right? Now we've got to make a pretty top. So we're going to go ahead and just want to make sure that that's staying together. Go ahead and we're going to do some cutting on here. So before, and I don't know why it makes a difference, but I'm doing it exactly the way she did it. Um, and you want to um, go on the left side now instead of the right side. So what we're going to do is we're going to go all the way up to the second line we are going to cut off these two ends and we're gonna cut off this one right here. So we're cutting off three of those little, they're kind of like squares, so that I'm making a little tab. So before I went counterclockwise, now I'm gonna go clockwise. Left-hand side, go up two, two, cut that off, cut that off, okay, clockwise, go up two, go up two, cut that off, and cut that off, clockwise, go up two, go up two, Cut that little bit off and cut that off. All right, now what I have to do, I'm gonna get all these out of the way here. Now what I have to do is just like I did with those other tabs, I want to come in here and just sort of miter cut those a little bit, but I also wanna do that with these top flaps because those are gonna get folded over as well. I don't know why I have that little piece of, it's probably because this is, this is my 
paper scissors rather than my ribbon scissors. Okay, so this is going to come off a little bit. That I'm going to miter cut. I'm going to miter cut this big tab up here. And I'm going to miter cut this tab. And you get little, like, all these little <laughs> shavings from those little miter cuts that you're doing, but you can collect them all at the end. One more tab. One, two. And you could probably do this when you made your original cut. That's what I did. I know I had already done. Okay, so now my cover is going to look like this. All right. Before I put my cover together, I want to put some designer paper on it. I want to put all of the designing on it before I actually put it together. It'll be a lot easier. So I'm using some of that, I think it's called Lights Aglow maybe paper. Um, so this measures three and nine sixteenths. So it's just a sixteenth of an inch more than three and a half and by uh, three and nine sixteenths. Now, if you wanted to do um, three and a half by three and a half, it would just mean that there would be less of the box cover. There'd be, you'd have a little bit more of a border on it. That's all that it would mean. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach that. To the box. Now these pieces right here, I'm gonna cover those with a piece that's three and nine sixteenths by seven eighths inch. So you could cut your one piece by three and nine sixteenths and then cut the other ones. Okay, now for this, I did have to make sure that I had this going the right way. Okay, because I wanted it, to, if I cut it the other way, it wouldn't look as good. It's supposed to look like trimming and my trimming would kind of be sideways. <laughs> So I want to make sure that I cut it the right way. So if your paper is a certain direction, um, you do want to make sure that it is landscape and not portrait when you cut these side pieces. Front piece doesn't matter, it's square. <laughs> so you could cut that one however you wanted to, but these side pieces. But if you cut that one, um, you would want the landscape so that your little design goes the correct way. This is so much easier to put on. The first time that I did this, I forgot that I needed to put this on and I started putting the cover together and then having to add it afterwards was kind of a pain in the butt. <laughs> so it does, it is a little bit easier to put this on before you put your box top together. Now, your box top is a little bit different than the bottom because it's going to be reinforced with like two layers going around. So we're going to start with those tabs just like we did with the box bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add blue. This time I think I'm going to add blue to all the tabs so I don't run into the same problem that I had last time where it was hard to put the blue on at the last minute. So again, I'm lining up the cut and the fold to square the corner. But cut and fold, square the corner. Cut and fold, square the corner. You guys are getting this. Tuck that one in and square that corner off as well. Super, super easy. Okay, next I'm going to put glue on all of these tabs that we have. And these are just going to get folded in. What it's going to do is it's going to hide those other tabs that we had to make our box. So it's going to hide those. It's also going to make this cover 
a little more sturdy because it's going to be two pieces. It's going to be folded on top of each other so that it's like two pieces of cardstock rather than just one layer thick. Okay, and one of the things that you can do to make sure that you get this a good press is you can take your bone folder and you can kind of press it down on there to make sure that it gets a nice good seal. And then you cross your fingers and you pray that the cover is going to go on. And it did. All right. So we've got a little cover for our little box. It did not take us that long to do that. All right. Let's see. We don't have any questions right now. So that's good. I think everybody's just probably watching. Um, I'm going to bring in, I wanted to put a tag on the outside of this. You could just wrap this with ribbon and add a tag. I decided I didn't want to put the ribbon on, but I am going to use, this is from our decorative tags. I cut this tag out right here. And so I'm going to put that on the front of this. I haven't done this yet. <laughs> so I'm winging this. All right. I made a different one that I'm going to show you. I kind of have in my head what I want to do. Um, but I haven't like completely done it. So I'm going to use these greens. I'm going to cut a couple of these to have some greens. So it looks like it's coming from a tree. I'm going to cut out this ornament in gold and I'm going to cut it out in the cherry cobbler and I'm going to do an inlay. So all these little pieces I'm going to lay inside of there. Um, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do for if I wanted to do a bow or if I wanted to do a die. I don't think I put the right die in here. I think we're going to do a bow with um, some gold thread because I don't think I have the bow in here. This set does come with like a little bow that you could cut out too. I didn't know how that would look. So I think we're just going to use some of the gold cord and we're going to do that. So I have my little cutting machine here. I should have cut this ahead of time, but I wanted... Like I said, I wasn't sure what I was going to do because I'm going to show you the other one that I made. You can see which one you like better. Um, we're going to do a couple of these at the same time. Do this and this. And I do have some of the um, adhesive sheets on the back of this to try to make it easy when we go to put it together. And again, the tip that I gave you last time, I'm going to run this through twice because I have those adhesive sheets on it. Um, not to line this up perfectly. It runs through a lot easier if you don't run it through perfectly. All right, so I'll take your pick tool here. We'll pull, poke these out. Now those things that I just poked out, next time I'm going to keep all of those when I do it in the cherry cobbler because we're going to put those inside of that ornament. It's called an inlay technique. I did it once before on a Facebook Live, I believe maybe, with a butterfly. So there's our greenery. I do one more greenery too, whoops. Get it back here, flying away here. One more greenery, one more ornament. And we'll cut that through. I'm not a type of person that likes to do things on the fly. So this is a little bit out of my comfort zone, but I thought we're gonna try it. <laughs> See how it goes. I saw something similar, but they had used the bell. Um, that's in this stamp set. This is coming from the Decorated with Happiness. It's a stamp set and it has matching dies. And so I used, um, we're going to use, we're actually not going to use the greeting from there. I'm going to use a greeting from Brightest Glow. So I have all the stamp sets that I used <laughs> in here. All right, so I'm going to take this. I'm going to bring some cherry cobbler 
ink and one of the greetings that says, tis the season. And I hope this works, ladies, because, like I said, I haven't tried this yet. <laughs> well, we're hoping that it turns out the way I have it pictured in my head. All right, I want this way along the bottom. Oh, so far so good. That's all I'm using the ink for. Then, let me see if we can get, look at those adhesive sheets, they're so nice, that just pulls right off. That looks like it's about the middle, maybe. Usually with dry fit, we're running a little bit over my hour. Goodness, yes, way over my hour, but I hope you're still enjoying what I'm doing. Okay, we'll put that the greens there. Then Ooh, just barely. I'm gonna put our ornament there. And I know that looks kind of funny right now. But we're gonna take these little pieces. So there's the top one. And when you do this in your if you do this um, with the adhesive sheets on the back, it normally stays, the ornament pieces stay inside like that. So I didn't poke them out right away because I wanted to, let's see if I can get this with my take your pick tool. Um, I wanted to keep, know which piece goes where. <laughs> I don't want them flying all over the place. So I made sure that it stayed inside of the ornament. And this is a little putsy, I'm not gonna lie. Um, at least started with my take your pick tool. Okay, and then this is gonna go in here. So I'm just inlaying this. It doesn't have a background piece for this die. It just had the outline. Because the idea is they had all those little scribbles um, in the stamp set. And the idea was that you would stamp a little scribble and then put this over the top of it. I didn't want that. <laughs> I wanted, I actually wanted the paper in there instead. So my thought was to do this little inlay technique and inlay the little pieces. It's much easier when you have those adhesive sheets. Now, if I didn't have these adhesive sheets, and I was having to do this with liquid glue, it would probably be a lot harder. Um, and it isn't hard, it's just trying to get the adhesive sheets off. But it keeps everything together in my ornament so it's easy to know what goes where. And I don't think that top piece, I don't think I'm gonna put anything there because I think I'm gonna put a little bow there with our gold cord. Okay, this little one is the little beast. There we go. All right, so there's our ornament. So far I'm kind of liking it. <laughs> I'll bring this back in here. Now if I just put some of that gold cord this is what I mean by that gold cord. This comes with gold and silver in a pack. Now there was a ribbon, uh, like a little bow that you could, that was a die in this as well that I could have used, but I'm thinking I'm gonna like that knot right inside of there. And we'll see if we can get this to cooperate a little bit. I do find that with this gold cord, sometimes it doesn't go exactly where you want it to go. And I think it's because of how it was wound on the spool. It was wound there for so long. <laughs> it's, it, it's kind of decided that this is where it wants to go. I'm going to keep these a little bit longer. And we'll go ahead and put that right in that little knot there. Put that knot right in there. I think in this case, I'm gonna take my glue dot and I'm gonna put my glue dot where I want it. I want it to go right 
there. And then I'm going to put this right here. And I hope that I'm going to trim it just a little. I think I'm liking it. I guess I can stamp on the fly a little bit, <laughs> as long as I have something in my head to begin with. And that I think I'm going to put up on some dimensionals. And this is nice because you can just take the cover off and somebody could reuse the box for something else. They could fill it with some candies or they could do whatever they want. They could take their little gift that you gave them out, take that little body butter out, and then go ahead and reuse the box for something else if they wanted to. Um, I don't want it to go that way. All right, tis the season. And then inside we've got our body butter as a gift. And this is a gift that's all ready to be given. Now, the one that I did, the reason I said that I was doing this on the fly, I wanted to show you two different ones. So this one uses some um, evening evergreen and it uses this, um, oh gosh, what's the name of that set? Uh, Christmas to remember. And it has these labels to go with it. I don't know if you can see all the glimmer in that, but oh my goodness, I put a whole bunch of Wink of Stella on some of that stuff to and cut those out. And then inside my box is our body butter again. All right, and this one, the cover is a little bit snugger. I must have done a better job of cutting that one than I did this one. All right, so. That is your week two of the 12 weeks of Christmas, a 3D item. Who doesn't like to give a 3D item? Now, if you don't want to spend as much money on a gift for like the body butter is here, because I want to say this was about $20 for that thing, that container. Um, you could always, like I said, fill that with candy or find something else maybe that would fit into it. Um, and we've got a nice gift to give away. All right, let me find the rest of the cards that we did today, ladies, and I will bring them in here um, at the end. I think they're all in my boxes. All right, so we have our baby card that we did with the little elephant, and we have our squirrel card. That is the double Dutch fold, and we have our gift box to give away. So that is what I have for you today. <laughs> I hope that you were able to stick with me for the whole thing. Um, let's see here. I'll come back to you. Here I am. <laughs> um, thanks so much for joining me. Sorry for the one little hiccup in there when I got disconnected, but um, I'm glad that the quality of the video was a little bit better today. And hopefully that, um, stays going. I will get the, I have the directions for all of them posted for the 12 weeks of Christmas one. I still have to type up that PDF and I will attach that a little bit later, probably sometime this afternoon along with the other one. So um, thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you have a wonderful day today. The sun is out here. It's a little chilly, but I think we're going to go for a W-A-L-K. And if I grab my tennis shoes, she'll be nuts. So, but it's time for us to get out and do that today. So I will get the rest of this to you later. Thank you so much for joining me. I really, really appreciate it. And I will see you again next week, uh, probably a little bit earlier than this week, unless I can't get